What's up, YouTube? Welcome to another video on House to Do the Mail. So glad to have you guys on this cold Sunday morning in Texas. Listen, we are continuing work on my 1969 Ford Torino. If you watched the first part of the two-part series of these videos, we are replacing the torque converter because this car has a stock or had a stock torque converter from day one. And with this camshaft and the profile and this, F, this little AFR headed 302, it's just no bueno. It's never really moved, so it's time to replace the torque converter. In the first part of the video, we simply just pulled the transmission out and checked it out. I discovered some other issues with the transmission. One being that it always had a leak in it, but now I think I know why. The extension housing bushing where your tail shaft yoke slides into has been worn out. And because it's gotten some slop in it, it's worn out the seal and the transmission fluid has been just leaking everywhere. So I've gotten a couple of things. We're going to put a new seal in it. And I've also gotten myself a new pan with a new pan seal um, and also a new filter. So we're going to replace that as well just since the transmission's out. So as you can see here, um, I've gotten the transmission cleaned up as well as I could with just a little scrubbing and soap and water and a degreaser, man. Um, so we've got it a lot cleaner. Um, so now let me tell you a little bit about this torque converter before we slap it all in. Mm -hmm. So this is the torque converter I got online. This is the whole reasoning for pulling the transmission out to begin with. I got this for such a good deal. Um, this is like a 24, 2500 stall torque converter. I think it's 2400 stall uh, torque converter-ish. Of course, it depends on a lot of things. We're not going to get into the dynamics of torque converters today. There's plenty of other info on it. But nonetheless, I purchased this. It is a 26 spline. I've done research on my transmission, and despite what I thought, I was wrong. Um, 1969 C4 transmissions have 24 spline input shafts, so this one simply won't work. You can go through all kinds of trouble if you wanted to, to, you know, take this apart, replace a stator inside of it with a 26 spline, rebuild the entire transmission, and, and change the input shaft to a 26 spline. Blah blah blah. Put a whole new transmission in it. Whatever. Simplest and easiest thing to do is just get the right torque converter for it. So for that, I did this. Okay, I called up Hughes Performance and I gave them a long spec sheet of everything that's on my car. The things they need to know are tire size, gear ratio, weight of the car, most importantly, your camshaft profile and duration and your lift at 50. Um, so they can get a, a good idea of where your power band is. I know that this car starts making power at about 2600 RPMs and it's really, really starts pulling at three. But it sounds cool, and um, do keep in mind this is all sort of temporary, so I'm not gonna go out and spend five, six hundred dollars on a torque converter because eventually this thing will be going away for a C6 and 460 big block combo. So I called up Hughes Performance, they had a uh, nice price on this one and lots of really good reviews. So here we go, it comes with new torque converter bolts. This is, guys, a 20, 24 spline. Part number on this is a 30-25, and this thing stalls at 2,800 RPM. This is the one that they recommended putting into my car. So this is what we got. So I'm really excited to see how this car is gonna run with a fresh high stall, higher stall torque converter, and I just can't wait to get into the car. So this is what I've purchased. If you guys are interested in the TCI converter, um, I'll give you the part number on it real quick right now so we can just get moving here. Okay, I've also purchased this trick flow pan. I decided while I was at it to get rid of any pan leaks that may be happening. I know there's pan leak leakage going on here too. So this is not an unboxing video. I just want to show you guys this piece. This is a trick flow racing C4 pan with a drain. Okay, I've got a Moroso rubber pan gasket. I like the rubber ones. It's got the, the metal seal stops on it so you can't over tighten them and crush them. I got in a standard filter for the uh, 64 to 69 C4. This is a gasket for the tail shaft, shaft housing since we're going to be pulling it to replace the seal. Here's the Timken okay, tail shaft seal and the extension housing slash tail shaft inner bushing. So this will have to be pressed and put back in. Let me show you guys a little bit of something about this real quick before we move on. Okay, so if you look at the drive shaft yoke here, in my case, what happened is this thing ran dry. Um, we ran, I guess, it, it leaked out enough fluid in it that when I was underneath the car and the tail shaft was installed, um, there was slop in here. There was enough slop that I thought it was the U-joints. Um, there shouldn't be any slop in the yoke once the transmission or the tail shaft is installed. Now, once this has been pulled, you'll notice that you will have a little bit of play, and I can't show you here, but you'll see that the tail shaft the input shaft there is definitely um, 
or the output shaft, excuse me, it's definitely got some play in it. But once you install this, um, the, that should all go away because you've got this piece that's pressed inside the shaft housing that your tail shaft actually your yoke slides into. So notice that this is a perfect fit. It slides up and down in and out of it. Um, this component here, this component here stays lubed with transmission fluid and the tail shaft extension should all stay lubed and uh, keep this from happening. If it runs dry, what happens is you're gonna start mauling it. When you start mauling it, you'll start creating drive shaft wobble. The drive shaft wobble will help increase, of course, the walling out of it. Um, the wear and tear on it and it'll also help increase your leak through the transmission seal in the bag because what happens is your drive shaft is no longer straight so okay you gotta help control leaking i went ahead and just put this board on it got a couple pieces of cardboard back here pushing the uh the snout in so it spins here but it's not going to pull out uh the purpose of this is just to make sure that we don't have a huge leak it's going to tilt the transmission up on its bell house to get the tail shaft off and it's going to be a mess Okay. Okay. And one more down here. Definitely want to forget this one. Okay. All right. Just like that. Okay. Okay, guys. Got my tail shaft housing moved over here to the bench. I should have done this earlier, but let's go ahead and remove the speed sensor. This is for my NVU gauges. New Vintage USA. And this will um, just make sure I don't damage it. I'm trying to pull out the uh, bushing. Okay, I need to clamp those threads a little bit. So we'll keep that over here. So what you can see is down at the very bottom, you got some grooves in it. Um, we're hoping to be able to get something in there and to pop it down towards this way. First thing we need to do is get this off. There it goes. Okay, you can see where I've drilled a groove in it, and I did not get into the edge here, which is cool. That's probably for me hammering on the seal, but so we've got it almost cut through, and um, hopefully the chisel will break it, rest, rest of it through, break the tension, and we can slide it out. There it goes. All right, she's out. So that was enough cut where I just barely went through enough to release the tension. We didn't damage anything in here. Of course, we're gonna have to clean the crap out of it now. We wanna make sure we get all, all of the metal shavings out, guys, because every bit of this metal shavings you don't get out will go through your transmission. So there's the old one. Let's take a look at it for a second here. You could definitely see, okay, yeah, look at that. I wanna hope you, let me see if you can see this here. All right. Yeah, look inside of there, guys. This may be a better view here. You can definitely see marks right there. See how it's ground smooth here and there? Yeah, so that right there is caused drive shaft wobble. All right, so put a little bit of transmission fluid on it. Now, make note of where this X was. There's an X shape here. This was at the bottom when I pulled it out. This is towards the bottom of the transmission, so I'm gonna just put it back in the same way I came. Put a little film of transmission fluid around it. We're gonna center it. Okay, so that's driven halfway in. There we go. That worked out about perfect. Okay. It's about perfect. Cool. All right, now we're gonna tap the seal on the back of the tail shop housing here. This seal, I went in and got one with the extra rubber boot, and I thought this would help keep kind of some of the extra you know, debris out. And uh, so it's got your normal seal inside. It's a Timken piece and it's got the extra boot on the outside. The problem with this is you can't put a board flat across it. So since I don't have the correct tools for anything, um, this is a hub removal tool from like a 95 F350 and it fits around it perfectly. It just happens to have these tabs here. So I'm hoping we'll drive this down with this. 
Give a couple spins. There it is. Hear that solid clink. That's it. Okay. Now what we're going to do is replace a gasket here. This should, if we're lucky, just pull right up. Perfect. And what we'll do is just make sure the surfaces are nice, dry, and clean. Okay, we're going to install this gasket dry. So our tail shaft back. Okay, we don't want to forget to put this one back in. This is the same one that had the clip on it. So get that clip in a spot that it needs to be in. And we can lower it down just like this. This is like I just need metal in it. Just clutch wear, which again, I think we would expect. Yep. Okay, so I got the transmission pan on. The new pan looks pretty good. The new gasket, so we shouldn't have any leaks there. So I'm just kind of, you know, kind of going over the transmission some more here. What I've noticed is this line is your output to the cooler. This comes right off the punt, uh, excuse me, the pump. This goes right off the pump and this goes up to the front cooler and it's returned in this line. This line is responsible, I believe, for feeding the tail house. And I want to make sure that the tail house itself is getting fluid, but it looks like we've got a crimp in the line right here, so that's not helping our flow. I'm gonna to try to decrimp that a little bit if I can. I may have to replace the lines, but this one over here is, it's loose at the connection right there. So what I'm gonna do is try to loosen up uh, this one to tighten this guy in before I tighten this back, but this one's really stuck. So I've tried rounding off the bolts, so I wanna be careful, but. All right guys, so the <sighs> trick is the right tool. All right guys. That'll do it. Okay guys, the transmission is looking a lot better. I went ahead and just crimped these things back open a little bit, opened it back up a little bit. Um, I think it'll be fine, I really do. I don't think it was ever close up. But what I'm doing now is I wanna make sure that the four holes, this is a 10 and a half inch bolt pattern. You got four bolts on the 69C4. What we wanna do is make sure that these are not any thicker than the stock ones. So I'm just kind of measuring this. We'll go over and measure the stock converter or we can crawl under it and look at the flex plate to make sure that it's the same bolt pattern or the same size bolt because I've read that some of these higher performance ones um, sometimes you need to open them up a little bit just a hair to make it easier for the torque converter to slide into the flex plate so you don't want to open up too much because you know it <laughs> definitely cause some plays and then uh, you can have some issues with the transmissions clanking pretty hard because the torque converter is spinning on the flex plate or just you know got a little bit of play so we don't want that but i am making sure that this is the same size before we go about taking the old one off perfect it's the exact same size don't have to worry about modifying the flex plate okay another thing to talk about real quick here is a kick down linkage which is clearly broken i'm sure you guys noticed that i had a mismatched bolt on here or someone had a mismatched bolt on here that was causing a lot of slop and play in the kick down um, if there's a seal i know you can't see this now because i've already fixed it, but there's a seal behind this washer or actually behind the kick down linkage that goes in between your shift lever and the kick down linkage rod so that has so much slop in it and this is another area for it leaking i went ahead and found the correct bolt for it put a lock nut on it and a bigger thicker washer here and then we've got this thing nice and tight so the kick down works once we'll get our cable replaced and uh yeah shift linkage is good so basically that was another spot for a leak that hopefully we resolved. Okay guys, what we're gonna do now is dump in a good quart. We wanna prime these things. You never ever want to put these things on the motor dry and then fill it up and let the pump do its job because you don't wanna set these up dry. You wanna prime these. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and dump in a quart of automatic transmission fluid here. This thing did not take a quart of fluid. And don't worry about the brand of fluid I'm putting here. I'm putting basic automatic ATF series fluid in here for now. Um, not worried about it, guys, really not. We're gonna replace the oil in it, run it, drain it, since I got a drain on it now, and put new fluid in it. But this is what I've got, this is what I'm gonna use. This transmission fluid says, they say on the, this torque converter says to use a quart, but it is half a quart, 
and it's overflowing. Like I can see the fluid right here. Okay, so this thing is not gonna seal until your transmission, <clears throat> until your pump shaft actually goes over. So this is gonna lock in into the case. There's some splines in here. There's gonna be two clicks in here. Actually, there's gonna be three clicks. Your first click is gonna be your input shaft. The second one's gonna be your pump shaft. And the third one's gonna be these notches right here. So you wanna make sure there's three clicks and this thing goes all the way in. Otherwise you could damage your, your pump. So what you wanna do is just slide it in. Okay. Okay, there's one, two, three. See how that went in three times? It's really easy to make the mistake by putting this thing in two times and then putting it in the car and you try to realize that nothing catches the way it should. So. You know, interestingly, it fit perfect. We're in. And uh, yeah, man, that's it. We're ready to put this transmission in, get it back underneath the car. So, yep. Cool. All right, YouTube, welcome back. It's a couple of days later, and I'm ready to put this transmission in. It is a nice rainy day outside. It's a good day to do it. So, we have cranked up the car. We're going to get the transmission slid under. I went ahead this time and unbolted. The headers on this side just give me a little bit more room and the uh, idea is just slide under there get the car back down on all four jack stands and we'll slide the transmission um, on top of the jack lift it up and rail us in so i'm not going to film a ton of this because i've already filmed taking it out really no difference except in reverse so i'm not going to bore you with it and uh you'll see me in a minute hopefully Okay, fast forward about an hour, hour and a half later, the transmission is in, the bell house bolts are in, and right now I'm just tidying some things up. The cross member's bolted in good, um, but it is in, guys. So the hard work has been done. Now we just gotta clean up some of the mess. I've already tied up, I've taken off the old linkage here for the uh, kick down, and um, looks like the uh, cable came unhooked <laughs> for the throttle, or the uh, throttle cable, or shifter cable. Looks like the shifter cable came unhooked, but all the bell house bolts are in. Most of those are done from the top side of the engine. And since I have this header undone right now, it made it so much easier. I should have done it earlier. So this rocks because I am just flying through it now. Like same little way. Oh yeah, that's awesome, dude. I'm excited. I'm really excited. All right, man. Hey, listen, that's going to do it for this video. You guys are going to have to stay tuned to part three because in part three, we will be putting fluid in this. I got to bolt the header on, put fluid in it, and we will be driving it. It is nasty and rainy outside, so I'm going to call it a night.
for the next part. You will be seeing us driving it and testing out this new torque converter. So I am really excited, man, to get back into Trino, get it driving again. And we got some things coming up on the Mustang too. So listen, I'm gonna end this video right here. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys are enjoying um, a little bit of work here on the Black Trino. And um, yeah, man, stay tuned. Stay tuned for more content and make sure to subscribe. Make sure to follow me on Instagram. And we'll see you guys next time. Take care.